Now to uh, introduce our first speaker, uh, we have Paul Vixie presenting the modality of mortality in domain names. And please give him a warm round of applause. Thank you, and uh, thank you for coming. I know there's a CTI summit in the other room, and I expect a lot of you, like me, would rather be uh, in there than in here. Um, but I have stuff to share. Uh, let me give you a little bit of the background, uh, how I came into this information. Um, so I worked in the DNS field for about 20 years. So I maintained BIND back before DNS was sexy and that was the only implementation we had. Um, started a company called Internet Systems Consortium. It's a nonprofit that now owns BIND and runs FROOT. Um, and somewhere in the middle of that, I started uh, the first anti-spam company called MAPS, uh, the Mail Abuse Prevention System. It was also spam spelled backward. We thought we were very clever. Um, I later got sued out of business. We had to sell MAPS to Trend Micro in order to pay our own lawyers because it turns out when you stop people from sending spam, uh, they sue you. Uh, who knew? Um, uh, the passion that drove that project was uh, personal. In other words, I had been working on the internet, trying to make communication easier for two decades by that time, uh, and or maybe a decade and a half. And uh, to see it abused by uh, these extractive personalities known as spammers really made me angry. Um, that pattern repeats. So uh, fast forward to 2010, um, the old RBL that we invented was great for email, although inadequate. Uh, the Serbal folks had to come up with RHSBL in order to make sure that domains could have reputations in the eyes of mail servers. Uh, the RBL we invented was just for IP addresses to have reputations in the eyes of mail servers. But we saw that there was an awful lot of internet traffic that was not email. And um, so in 2010, we developed the RPZ. Uh, the re response policy zone, which is a way to publish and subscribe uh, to policy about DNS resolution. It's become quite popular. It's, uh, it's in BIND, it's in um, CNOT. Uh, there is an implementation of it for Unbound. And it's really cool because um, rather than let the DNS resolution succeed and then deal with uh, maybe blocking the connection to a malicious party, you can simply block the DNS resolution. Um, so that's the kind of thing I do. Started as a DNS guy, got angry, started doing security innovation. Uh, and that's what leads to this effort. We have a large network of um, open source uh, passive DNS collectors. We see 200,000 cache misses every second of every day. And we uh, store them. Uh, there's no surveillance, no PII. We didn't, never see an end user IP address. Uh, but we do have uh, a pretty extensive picture of the content of DNS, even though by policy we never remember who looked something up or where they were. We do like to know what was looked up and what was available uh, at various times. Uh, and one of the things we now know uh, is the rate of creation of new domain names. Um, so. We're going to explain sort of what a newly observed domain name is and what the variations are because uh, the details are always fun. Um, uh, if I see anybody fall asleep, I'll skip that slide. Um, but uh, then I want to explain what we did. We actually took a look at a cohort of newly observed domain names and studied them longitudinally to find out what happens to them um, because the public policy around domain name creation is that more is better, faster is better, and cheaper is better. And I think that that is a mistake. I would like to inform public policy with some of the impacts of, uh, of those three assertions um, because I think we can do better. I have a proposal at the end. Um, so we're getting around two terabytes a day, uh, 200,000 a second. Uh, we've been storing the unique patterns that we see in that, uh, in that data since 2010. Uh, that database is itself available. 
Uh, if, you, if you want to make commercial use of it, I'll charge you. If you don't, if you want to make private, non-commercial use of it, I won't. So please don't be, don't be shy about uh, contacting us. Um, and we have a, uh, a number of real-time channels that derive from the raw passive DNS, uh, one of which is a uh, channel that contains only newly observed domains. And I want to be uh, somewhat careful here. Um, by a newly observed domain, I mean a delegation point. So example.com is a delegation point. www.example.com is not. That's something you create for yourself or ask a sysadmin to do. But to get example.com in the first place, you have to go to a registrar and possibly pay money and so, and so forth. And that cre that's called a delegation point because at example.com, the, uh, the administrative control of names changes because in .com, it's, for, it's VeriSign. But at example.com, it changes. It's you. Um, and those delegation points are the backbone of the DNS industry. Uh, it is the creation and uh, takedown of those that drives the life of anybody in this room who is looking at the systemic digital violence rather than uh, you know, studying only what's happening inside of a single CPU. Um, and I have made all kinds of uh, uh, estimates and assertions, and we finally decided, you know, um, people don't believe that stuff. It uh, sounds truthy. Um, and, you know, in my defense, at the time I said it, 95% of new domains were junky and malicious, but uh, it's less now, and that was a surprise. And we thought, what if we had objective science where people could study for themselves uh, what these domains uh, are and how they get used, and especially how they die and when they die? Um, and that's what uh, occasions this paper. So we thought, um, let's just do a seven-day study, right? If a domain dies after seven days, that's not sudden. Um, I mean, it's still a little unusual. Um, I, I, can, I cannot imagine that uh, virusbulletin.com uh, would ever, or any other valuable property, would ever be created and, and destroyed in eight days. But nevertheless, we wanted to look at things that had truly short lifetimes. And so although we did a 90-day study, we collected about three new delegation points a second for 90 days. We only really studied what happened to each of them for seven days. Um, so it's possible that there are other modes of death, uh, other graph clusters further out in the timeline uh, than what we have looked at. Uh, I would encourage you to ask us for the data set or a similar new data set so that you could do your own study. I'd love to cooperate with uh, anyone who wants to do that. Um, so to find out what happens to a domain name, you have to query it. Uh, and we do have observations. We certainly see these names get used, but uh, no DNS collection network is complete. Uh, no one has 100% observability, so we didn't want to just look at the passive feed. We decided we'd ask the question, does this thing still exist? Does it still point where it did before? If it doesn't still exist, where did the failure occur? Was it removed by the registry? Was it removed by the registrar? Possibly by the registrant? Uh, was it uh, not removed at all from the delegation system, but the authoritative name server operator took it down? Uh, and then finally, did uh, one of our colleagues in one of the still existing network reputation uh, systems, such as Serbal or Spamhouse, um, take it out. Because once you've been listed in one of those reputation systems, you are effectively dead. And uh, I like that, by the way. Um, so we made about 20 queries for each one. And we did them on successive powers of two to avoid uh, overloading the system. So, you know, we did one when we first saw it, one a thousand seconds later, two thousand seconds later, and so on, uh, out to seven days. And um, if something uh, dies in more than one way, uh, we in this study are only going to tell you the first, uh, first form of death. In other words, if it disappeared from the authority name server and then two days later disappeared from the registry, then uh, we don't account for that here. It's in our data, but we didn't think that that was an interesting uh, follow-on effect. Now, we need to talk a little bit about effective second-level domains, um, simply because these delegation points can occur uh, outside of the ICANN registry or registrar system. 
Um, so I normally say a delegation point is something you can buy from GoDaddy or one of their competitors. Uh, but there's more to it than that because inside of uh, cloudapp.net, uh, there are um, delegation points where, uh, in this case, Azure is going to be uh, giving a subdomain to a customer that they then manage. And so there's a long list of these uh, so-called public suffixes. Uh, and you can get it at publicsuffix.org if you don't already know about it. Um, that's usually used by browsers to decide cookie policy, but it turns out to be ideal for our purpose as well and very complete. So I've told you what a newly observed delegation point is or a newly observed domain. Um, for simplicity, um, we, when we, try to, when we discuss this, use the terms that are common in the community rather than uh, common inside the DNS technical field. So a newly observed host is simply one of those longer names that is underneath a delegation point. Uh, so printer4.example.com is an example of a, a, a host in, in this parlance. They're not all hosts, they are all kinds of other things, but uh, to call them uh, fully qualified domain names or FQDN would be to lose our audience, and so we call them host names. Uh, but I uh, need you to know the difference. So we're seeing between two and three newly observed delegation points every second. We're also seeing about 150 newly observed fully qualifieds or host names every second. That's a lot. Um, and even if you consider that the internet has become a global infrastructure and uh, has billions of people using it, that is an awful lot of domain creation. Um, those fully qualified names. Uh, it's very difficult for me to imagine that uh, 150 times a second, some system administrator renumbers some host and has to edit his own file or uh, you know, add something. I just, I think there's something else in there. Uh, we haven't studied that, but I just w want you to know 150 is unreasonable. Okay, so let's get to the numbers. Um, we had about 11 million of these total over a six month study. Um, we uh, found that of them, uh, 10 million survived uh, longer than a week. Um, that was a lot higher than I expected. Uh, when I first looked at this back in 2012 or so, uh, about half were dead in a day. So it, that means we have to rerun this study every year to find out what the trends are. Um, but of those uh, million or so that are dead in under a week, uh, that 8%, uh, we are interested in how did they die and what characteristics do they have in common besides that death, besides that early death. Um, so here you've got the median at seven hours and you're reaching 61% of the total that will be dead in a week are actually dead in less than a day. Um, so. Really, uh, the, 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 the mark of death is on these domains from the moment of their birth, as far as I can tell from these numbers. Uh, if you're going to die, it will be early. Um, and, um, you know, that shouldn't surprise us because this is the selected, this is the biased selection of domain names that were used to annoy somebody, therefore complaints occurred, therefore some kind of takedown occurred. Uh, we believe that a lot of the truly short-lived ones are um, taken down by their owners uh, because they've, uh, they were only used for a single targeted attack and are no longer needed. Um, but I don't have data to back that up, so that would be make, me making stuff up at the podium. So um, the black line is the total, showing that 8% number. And what you can see in the green line is that the single greatest contributor is uh, blacklisting, uh, which we used to call black holing back when RBL meant real-time black hole list instead of whatever it means now. Um, but there is a, about a third of the ones that are going to die are removed by the delegator. In other words, uh, some registry or registrar action took place. Um, and a vanishingly small percentage of first cause of death happened because an authority name server operator uh, took out the content, just removed the zone from the server and no longer offered publication services. Um, that also interests me because uh, that I think is an opportunity. I think uh, figuring out a way to route complaints to those people might get that red line up a little bit. Um, 
you, you may be able to tell that I'm still somewhat passionate about domain names not being used to do me harm. Um, right, so um, blacklisting is really effective. And here I think we have to point to the Spam House team because they have really led the charge on automation between their spam traps and their other real-time data sources and their policy output. Um, and uh, you know, the, there are other distributed reputation systems that are as fast, but they were the first ones to be that fast. And so they are uh, really encouraging uh, rapid reaction. And you have to have a rapid reaction. There are uh, spammers out there who, if you let them keep their domain name for a full 15 minutes, they have already made all of the profit they ever expect to make, and they no longer care if you take it down. So if part of our goal here is to treat war as economics and drive up the costs of our adversaries, then we're going to have to be quick about it. Um, as I said, most of the uh, blacklisting is, uh, most of everything is in the first 24 hours. Um, and we didn't see any second mode here. Uh, there's, there's a lot that happens early and then it tails off in the normal way. Uh, these are the deaths that occur not from blacklisting, but because of a registrar like GoDaddy or a registry like VeriSign uh, says, okay, that's it, I got too many complaints about that, I'm taking it out. Um, and this was a little bit interesting to see that peak at a day and a half. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. Um, I understand what's happening in 51 minutes, but uh, the, that day and a half doesn't correlate to anything else I've seen, um, unless it's some automated procedure where um, it gets queued for deletion at uh, the end of the day, and then maybe there's a cron job that runs at midnight that actually executes all of the deletion requests that have queued up. I don't know. Um, I expect I'm going to have to uh, walk the streets and go talk to those people to find out uh, what underlies the day and a half peak. Uh, and the rest of it is a simple distribution from four days out to seven. It has the nat normal tail off. Um, so even though it's a very small uh, percentage of the total, it's still 20,000 names that got killed off at the authoritative name server. Um, and that peak at four days uh, is another mystery. I understand the 12 hours. I don't understand the four days. Um, if you're doing this and you know why you're doing it at that level, please inform me. So now let's talk a little bit about the types of top-level domains uh, that are encouraging this behavior. Um, some of you have heard me rant about the new generic top-level domain program from ICANN. Uh, in which I have said the reason we needed uh, almost 2,000 new TLDs is because spammers did not have enough choices. Uh, I stand by those remarks. Um, and th this study bolsters that preconception. Um, so indeed, most of what's going to die is going to die in a new TLD. Um, and there's about an even split among what's left between the legacy and you know, the ComNet org, that kind of thing, and the CC TLDs. It's worth remembering that the country code TLDs are sovereigns. They don't have to follow ICANN policy. They tend to do so because they helped make that policy, but uh, they, they need not. And so there are some hot spots among the, t uh, the country code TLDs who use their sovereignty to pretty much annoy anybody they want or their customers want to annoy without facing any kind of recourse for it. Uh, we saw very little of this inside the IDN space, the, the new internationalized domain name TLDs. Uh, I think there just isn't enough use for there to have been enough malicious domains created in order for them to really represent a large sample of this total. Um, and uh, here are the actual results. Uh, .cricket is uh, the worst of the, of the worst in terms of things that get created and then get wiped out very quickly. Uh, I was really shocked to see .tokyo in this list. Um, where are they? Oh, wait, they're in the next list. Um, .biz surprises nobody. Uh, there have been years where I simply rejected all mail from anything ending in .biz because there was nothing. I hadn't, uh, there was no cost to rejecting all of it. Um, I think dot science is a little bit of a surprise. Um, nevertheless, these are the uh, GTLDs, uh, the, the top 25 that actually had a, a few thousand deletions. We didn't have enough room to represent all of the ones that touched our study, but these are the significant ones. Um, 
Right. Going to move right along here. Um, so drilling into a few of these, uh, .xyz is a little bit uh, controversial. They, um, they, they've had a lot of free domain uh, programs where they're trying to you know, bolster their position in the internet by not charging people. Uh, that had predictable effects, which you can see here. Um, .top, I don't understand. Um, I don't know what people think it means or what they think they're conveying by buying a name that ends in .top. Uh, but it's a uh, bad place, bad network neighborhood. Um, gonna have to skip forward over some of this in the interest of time. For comparison purposes, this is ne uh, common net. Um, so, you know, th these numbers, uh, it's all, all scaled, but you'll see it is a smaller scale than the dot .top and dot, uh, .xyz. Um, I want to say, by the way, the paper covers this in detail and is short and readable, so I encourage you, if I've piqued your interest at all, you know, please go, uh, go, go read through the paper, which has a much more complete description of these trends. Um, but anyway, these are old. This data has not changed for common net for many years, and I think that's largely because all the good names are taken. And so the ones that get created are part of a diminishing pool of things that could actually look meaningful if written down. Um, you can see here how the uh, .eu $3 price contributes to uh, its uh, presence in this chart. And then we've got the, uh, the, the leading free CCTLDs. And then we've got a uh, pretty expensive one. I was shocked that uh, .io at $33 each had a high death rate compared to you know, .uk and .us and all the others that are very cheap. Um, so there really isn't a correlation. I mean, there, there is some uh, anecdotal evidence that being free gets you more abuse, but we, ex we would have predicted that. Uh, but it's not a strong correlation. Uh, that means that the, the bad guys who are using these things in order to anchor their attacks are not price sensitive. And that again was a surprise, at least the ones that uh, were responsible for this cohort. Um, .tk is a perennial favorite of mine. I was actually its custodian for a brief time. Um, and it is uh, a hotbed of things nobody wants to talk to. In my RPZ config at home, um, I allow tcl.tk because Tickle is a computer programming language that decided to register under TK. Um, but I don't allow anything else. I just black hole the whole TLD because, you know, Tokolo is a tiny little Pacific island off the shore of New Zealand and it is full of people who don't mean me harm uh, and didn't need this domain name and so it is leased to a guy in Amsterdam uh, who means me harm or at least allows his customers to do me harm. Um, so that there, there are some long-term impacts that will be felt by bad behavior unfortunately it's going to be felt by those Pacific Islanders if they ever want their uh, CCTLD back. Um, .cc is uh, pretty low. Um, it, it just, um, this is the normal. It, this is actually a picture of the norm. Um, so, what can I tell you? Three years ago, I proposed to ICANN that um, new domain names should be allocated and then put on a public uh, message board of some kind uh, before they went live. You could call it a public comment period if you wanted, but we're not looking for comments. What we're looking for is an opportunity for uh, the reputation industry, uh, you know, Serbel, Spam House, uh, everybody who studies domain names to have a head start to be able to see, okay, this domain name with those name servers and this who is information is gonna go live in whatever, 24 hours, 10 minutes, even 10 minutes would make a difference. Because that way you would have a chance to say, you know, this has too much in common with other patterns that have turned out to be uniformly malicious and I'm just, I'm gonna uh, black, black hole it uh, with, even before it exists. Because otherwise it's foist upon us in its moment of creation and becomes immediately globally usable. And by the way, that was a hard technical problem to get that instant global propagation of this metadata. Um, so I'm proud of the team that made that happen, but I'm not proud of how it's being used. And I would like to give the reputation people a head start on the malicious actors. Now, what we're doing in the, in the meantime, 
uh, because I got laughed out of the room when I suggested that to ICANN. Uh, what we're doing is to publish an RPZ that just has newly observed names. That means once a second we update this DNS policy feed to add the two or three domain names we've seen and then uh, delete the ones that are now too old to qualify as new. Um, so what you think is new might be 10 minutes, might be 24 hours. Uh, we have a number of different RPZs that have different total durations, but it means that at my house, a domain name that has first been observed by Farsight in the last 10 minutes doesn't work. So if my kids uh, click on something that is in that category, they get a 404 error. Um, I am strangely okay with that because I grew up at a time that you used to send email with an ASCII template and wait three days for a new domain name, and that was quick enough. So um, I would like the uh, public policy people uh, to take a look at what's happening with the domain names that their policies are allowing to be created uh, and see if we can make it easier for the blacklisting industry to do their work uh, or perhaps just make it easier, uh, maybe cause domain names to uh, be a har little harder to get because right now they are too cheap to meter. I have about three minutes for questions. <laughs>